Everybody talking about the weekend. I don't see the hype though. When it's done on Wednesday, see that with your eyes closed. Every hump day, nine o'clock on the dot. The insurance and the kid be dropping gems. Don't believe me, just watch. is happening syndicate members it is wednesday you know what that means it means we are live from austin texas i am Let's here roll. with my great great friend he's over there joe gantasaurus you probably know him he is the king of facebook groups <laughs> the king of pnc and he's, What's he's going a pretty on? good first baseman i gotta admit he's a pretty good first baseman hey what are you doing my friend Hey, I'm doing good. Look, you're making me go right into my weekly win, baby. Y'all already know. I know what you're going to say. You say it every week. We won I another do. softball game. We did. We hey, we came out freaking swinging last night, man. And I tell you, I didn't, you know, I almost wasn't going to bring up that play. I made it first. And that dude, I, I had his ass out. That was for sure. But I had a nice step and a low snag. Uh, but yeah, that yeah. was definitely my weekly win. And we're um, actually on Saturday, I'm going to uh, Temple. So we've got our um, Texas Redwood. So our main softball team, we're going to uh, North versus South. So it should be a good tournament. I think there's, I think it's bats, rings, and a, I can't remember if there's cash or not involved this weekend, uh, but I'm excited for that. Regular softball civil war? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's probably, dude, I'm telling you, man, sometimes these softball games be freaking feeling like it's a war, man. Like to the point of where there was one tournament that guns were brought out um, at the end. So, um, wow. yeah, so, dude, slow pitch softball, bro. It gets freaking You're not heated. talking about guns, uh, are you? Bang, no, bang? Bang, bang, That's bang baby. Uh, yeah, I don't want to um, be around that atmosphere. But yeah, taking taking the whole family out there. Laura loves going, um, sure. and there's tons of kids running around and stuff. And so it's it's definitely going to be a, a good one. So that is that is my win. Softball, baby, as always. How about you? As always, always. Money, money, money. Money is my win. I love. Who doesn't like money in this business? Um, Humana threw out almost half a million dollars in bonus marketing cash to us this year that we get to pass through to agents. Wow, that's Sweet. more than they've ever given us. Uh, Aetna came in right behind them and gave us a quarter of a million. Says, here, here's your AEP money. Go give that to your agents. Get them out there. Get them producing. So that always feels good to see that money roll in and see that budget and know that I can reach out to my guys and be like, yo, we got fat right. pockets. Who wants to do some marketing? Let's go. Right. So oh, we're going to have a big sweet. AEP. I think we did 20. We did just short of 27,000 apps last year for AEP in the Medicare Advantage world. Um, I think our target is 35,000 this year. Nice. Um, we'll probably beat that to be honest with you. Cause I know we put on some bigger teams and with that kind of a marketing budget behind us, um, we should be able to get out there and absolutely light it up. The power, so the power of relationships right there, right? Well, that in production. Production helps. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> Humana's not going to give us that money if the production's not put your, there. Put your money where your mouth is. I don't care how good of friends you are. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, man, That's we've got funny, a killer. Right? We've got a really good guest today. I'm excited for this show. Uh, we've got yeah. a young gun of insurance. He is fresh off the ultimate agent. Come on. Uh, if any, I don't know if any of you guys saw that show. If you didn't see it, you need to climb out from underneath the rock that you're living in. Uh, but our good buddy Cody Askins was one of the first guys that put a real interesting reality show for insurance out there, specifically for the life insurance industry. And, and if you haven't seen it, I'll just give you a quick rundown. He took five agents, flew in, in a private jet to an undisclosed location, locked them in a mansion, fed them, took care of them, surrounded them with coaches. And in five days or six days, they had to sell a bunch of life insurance by phone out in the field, had some different challenges. And at the end of it, one of them was crowned the ultimate agent, and he gave away $121,000 in cash and prizes, released the final episode at his big 8% Nation Conference along with the winner. And, well, we have one of the contestants on the show today. Let's bring him on here, man. It's Mr. Johnny Nittafans, a young guy. He's out there killing it. Let's go. What is up, dude? What's up, guys? How are you? Thanks for so much for having me. It means a lot. Well, thank you for coming on, man. We're a fan of Johnny Nitta fan. So <laughs> hey, we wanted to get you I on like the show, that. talk to you a little bit, and see what's yeah. cracking. So what's going on in your world out there today? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely like the, the summer is definitely dying down a little bit, which is nice. Not, there's no 120 degrees at anymore. It's more like 100, just a little bit like that. So it's nice, cool, refreshing. Definitely going this out to the gym Definitely early doesn't in the morning, live in so. Texas. <laughs> definitely not in texas arizona right? though arizona's yeah. hot too though i'll give you that dry heat yeah. it's, oh, that's it's right not that's fun right either but 
Yeah. Yeah, so, Texas no, has things two are good seasons. We have summer and summer. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, real quick. Well, Johnny, tell them, uh, tell them a little bit about just kind of who you are. Like, who, who's Johnny? Um, where you're from? Really, and ultimately, what I, where I want to start before, we, guys, we're going to get into Ultimate Agent, but then we're going to really pivot. We're going to stay there just for a second because I think a lot of y'all, um, especially if you're in this group, um, then you definitely have seen the stuff about Ultimate Agent. I'm sure you've watched it, and it's, I mean, it's been freaking, it, it was amazing to watch. Honestly, I was hooked. Our family was, like, watching it stuff. But then we're going to really pivot from that. Um, we want to give you all some really tangible action items as well as yeah. um, just some mindset, some values and things that I think, you know, Johnny does a really good job of embodying um, in his personal life but in his business, and that's really, I think, what has allowed him um, at a very young age and very young in the industry to freaking come out hot like just freaking ripping it man so um but before we get there again who, who's johnny where are you from man kind of what you've been up to um and then we'll get into ultimate agent and go from there totally brother well yeah so i uh i grew i was born in san diego i always got to bring that in because it's like a little ca like cali guy and so uh born there is only there for like a year and a half and so i moved out from there we moved out to uh new mexico and so i was born like raised in new mexico Grew up there and uh, had big dreams from the start, right? I, it's funny because you think about it, like everybody says, like you, you might be a natural seller. Sometimes some people say yes and no, um, but I, I remember with my with my uh, good friend, my best friend, we would go out door knocking so that we can sell tickets because we had big dreams to go play at these big like AU tournaments and club okay. basketball tournaments, and so we but we couldn't afford it, right? So we are we we didn't grow up. Um, like wealthy by any means. And so like we, we had to go door knocking. We had to go um, literally selling tickets. So that like raffles so that we could hopefully get to these tournaments and get some, some fundraiser sponsorship stuff. So I uh, grew up and just like had a big, big, big dreams of like, I wanted to go to the NBA. I wanted to be that guy. Um, and, and I wanted to do that. So I, I, that was like pretty much my life. I did that growing up and, and um like went to all the club basketball tournaments and like that, that's literally all I did go to the gym. Like I was just the gym rat. Right. And so I went to school so that I could get the grades to impress college coaches so I could get to a better school, not to get an education really. And so <laughs> I was like kind of there just so that I could like do my work, get in and, and have a better resume. But that's like it. I wasn't really about getting a ton of like education, stuff like that in terms of the, the system. Right. So had big dreams, uh, big aspirations to do that. Raised a ton of money, went to this, uh, like, so that I could go to this Hillcrest Prep out here in Arizona. So I moved out here, like, literally a week after I graduated high school. So um, if you guys don't know, the prep school is, like, right between high school and college. And so you play, like, our, we had a schedule of 50, like, games, right? in our, in our prep school, but we literally play 25 junior colleges. And if you go to junior college, you lose a year of eligibility. Mm. But if you go to a prep school, you play all the junior colleges, you get in front of the same colleges, scouts, all that stuff, but you don't lose a year of eligibility. So a lot Got of people it. go there to get bigger, stronger, faster, develop their skills. So I, I raised a, like a bunch of money, about $8,000. Uh, at that time, it, it felt like a lot and just friends, family, all that stuff moved out here and I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dude, I cannot like, I cannot use this. Like, I just didn't want to do it really anymore, honestly. And so I was like, I can't just use this money like everybody else go and just go to Chick-fil-A every day and just have money in my account, just chilling there. So I actually started a clothing line when I was 18. And so I was like, dude, honestly, like, I just want to jump in. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to own my own business. And like, I can, I have the ability to, and just learn a ton of skills at a very like younger, right? Yep. So I was like, I'm going to learn how to file an LLC. I'm going to learn how to do all these business things and just learn from experience. And if I fail, I learned. So that right. was my mindset. And so I uh, started a clothing line and uh, it, it was all right. Uh, I, I tried to find some different people. The biggest mistake I made is I didn't have a mentor, somebody mm -hmm. really like helping me, guiding me through the process. I kind of was just like, all right, cool. Like look Let's up go. YouTube videos. What's next? <laughs> like, how do, right. how do you do this? And so I just like, I tried to get around influencers that like could wear my brand. And one time, uh, I don't know if you guys know uh, B dot a dot. He's like an impersonator of like all these NBA guys. I saw him like just literally playing basketball one day and I was like, yo, so literally 
I have this shirt in my bag. And um, this is my, my clothing line. Um, okay. And so I was like, yo, put this on. Let's make a highlight reel. And you just play in it. So he made a highlight reel, did it, promoted on his Instagram. And like, boom, business was popping for a little bit. And um, and that's just the power of relationships like you were talking right. about. You just find somebody, you take the opportunity, you see it, you just go after it. I'm like, dude, what are the odds that this happens? Just have it. He's like, dude, this is awesome. So made a highlight reel and business popped from there. And then, um, I don't know, I just didn't really like making clothes in all honesty. <laughs> <laughs> so I just stopped. You're right. Hey, so, yeah. and so, okay, so let's, okay, let's stay right there though, because I think I heard you say the word quit and I, I actually have to disagree with you there. And anybody okay. that, anybody that hears me, hears this word come out of my mouth a lot is I don't think you necessarily quit. I think you just made a pivot. Right. And that's, yeah. Yeah, man, that actually True. even works perfectly for the, for the basketball reference too. But, True. um, and I, and I will say too, I was like, I wanted to be in the NBA too. And then I grew like six inches over a summer and they're like, you can't play point guard anymore. And I'm like, screw you guys. I'm a point <laughs> guard. And they're like, dude, you're like six, six, you gotta be a center. And I'm like, screw it, man. I'm playing lacrosse. Um, but you know, I think, I think again, you didn't necessarily quit. I think yeah. and agent agents feel this. Agents feel this and it's I wanted to stay there because I think it's directly relatable to when agents feel that burnout. Right. And I, I you kind of yeah. talked about that where it's like, man, I just didn't really I didn't feel it. And I think a lot of the times and I talk with a ton of agents, you know, on a weekly basis where it's like a lot of them are feeling that burnout and, and make a pivot. Right. Like, hey, you don't necessarily have to like, oh, now, you know, Johnny's going back home you know, cause he's not doing it anymore. It's like, nah, man, let's pivot. And then you went and really tapped into that entrepreneurial spirit. doesn't mean that necessarily it was, you know, the clothing line wasn't a bad idea, right? Maybe it just wasn't the right idea, right? But it's yeah. still, you still, you chased it, you pursued it, right? And then what'd you do? Then you made a pivot, right? Pivot, so then yeah. let's, let's talk about that pivot. How, how did you get into insurance, right? And so for me, mm -hmm. I started when I was 19, but that was because, I mean, everybody knows this part of my story is like, I've always wanted to be in insurance, right? Who, who kind of, how, how did you learn about insurance and why did you really yeah. decide that, Hey man, I'm going to, I want to pursue this. I want to make this a career. Dude, it's crazy because, uh, so I got married about a year ago. Our anniversary is coming up and, um, sh like I, I, how knew old are you? That how old are you right now? I'm 21. Yeah. You guys, so. hey, you guys watch ultimate agent. He was drinking a water bottle when everybody else was drinking champagne on the plane. <laughs> I was like, Oh, Johnny's 20. Yes, sir. Anyways, yeah. go for it. Yeah. No. So, so I got married a year ago and, um, I got introduced to the insurance world from uh, my father-in-law because her dad actually is in health insurance, been in health, health insurance, like group health benefits, uh, for 32 years. And so he grew a book of business and, and was able to sell it and uh, did really well. And so uh, he's still doing it to this day. And so he's like, hey, this could be a good opportunity to really build a career. And I was like, dude, like who wants to do insurance? But it's like, I saw it as like a life I could create. Right. <laughs> I saw it like besides, <laughs> besides Joe. Uh, yeah. Um, be careful, man. I did want to do it. All right. <laughs> yeah. But for me, I was like, dude, what in the like, they're insurance, bro. But then at the, when I realized it, I was like, this could create the life I really want. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I feel like as you, you get there and then all of a sudden you connect it with like what you're doing. And then all of a sudden you like, love it. Like you become a passion. Like people ask me all the time, like, why do you love doing insurance? Or like, why are you so obsessed or passionate about it? And I'm like, because I think we, as, as you grow and learn, it doesn't, it doesn't start like there, but you, you build those two together. And it's like, this it's fun. Like when you, the relationships are fun, like going to conferences are a great time because you get to talk, you get to grow together. You're able to mm -hmm. network. You're able to do a lot of different things together. And I, I'm a people person. I love talking, like networking, just like building relationships with people. And so I was like tying both of those together, you could just create a huge income. Right. So I got introduced to the insurance world. Uh, right before I got married, I said no at first. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, cause he introduced me to his preferred lender. So, um, or vendor. So pretty much it was health insurance benefits. He was just that. And then there's the voluntary benefits like Aflac that they don't pay for is the, the employer doesn't pay for, but the employees do, mm. uh, payroll deduction, all that stuff. And I was like, I don't really want to do that. And then after I got married, um, I was like, dude, I can't work at Starbucks for the rest of my life. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and so um after a month i hit hit that guy up and i was like hey 
I'm ready. So what do I need to do? He's like, all right, take the test, took the test. And a lot of people drag out the test. I just took it in a week. Boom, just took it, failed, took it a, a couple of days after that, took it again and passed and uh, just went. And so literally I started right when I was about to start, I got COVID. And I was like, dude, because you just go business to business, cold door knocking, all that stuff. And I was like, all right. So he's like, well, you could cold call from the house. You don't you like that's OK. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So we, I just was an appointment setter to start. So he, he's like, all right, here's a list and try to set an appointment here's a script too and i'm like what the heck so yeah. i like literally when people say like you like they, they think people are like good or like they start good dude you're not like literally right. i remember <laughs> sitting on my couch like the phone was so heavy i was like like stomach dropping i'm like they, they was horrible at first right you just mm. call and you don't even know what you're doing right um but it's like as you build it you build it okay set an appointment they know show. All right. You said, you said a couple more, you may be one show. And then all of a sudden you start building the confidence and seeing the process go. So I started in employee, uh, employee benefits, like the voluntary benefits side. And then, um, as I did it for three months, the, my third month, we did 30,000 in premium. Right. Great. And, um, my commission was about 3000, three to 4,000. Mm. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> like I'm listening to Cody Askins, like, different people in the life insurance industry doing 30,000 in premium and making 20 to 30, 20 to 25,000, whatever. Right. And I'm like, dude, like there's gotta be a different way. So I like interviewed a bunch of different people from his podcast and um, I ended up landing with Mason Van Meter. And so we, we ended up like growing and, and so I developed my skills with him and he really helped me out. And so that's how I got into the life insurance industry is literally through Cody's podcast after I was like, how do I, cold call an insurance lead and then all of a sudden boom so that's how i got into like the life insurance industry i love it i love it that's how dude that's literally how i started i mean and that was i think that was i mean dude we were so broke it was like i didn't have anything else other than download a list of names and numbers scrub it right make sure they're not on the do not call and just freaking pound the phones and you're a hundred percent correct like and it sucks out the gate right now. Again, I had some past experience before we started Redwood and everything like that, but still it's like, I was used to working leads, right? Like where I had yeah. to unplug my phone at night because so many leads were coming. And then it's like, you pivot and you shift to me now all outbound. And we did outbound for like 18 months. Um, but you know, you suck. And then about three months into it, man, I really developed a skill set where yeah. dude, if they gave me, if they gave me 30 seconds, I'm at least getting a quote out of you. Like, and it was all about that intro, but I wanted to, to real quick um, make a quick highlight on that is that I think when you when you start and sometimes, you know, when I call it like some of my older jobs, when I first was going was like you, you call them like your best worst job. Right. It's like, man, because you hated it at the time. Right. And it was a pain yeah. to get up and like, oh, gosh, another day of cold calling. Right. But really, that experience was so invaluable. Like yeah. if all shit hits the fan, guess what? you got a skill set to where you can still go make money by freaking cold calling people because that's where you started. Right. And I think that's, Hey, some people overlook that. And I'm, Hey, I do a lot on Facebook. Like what if Facebook crashes, right. Or goes away? Like what does Joe do? Right. Like, well, it's like, thank the Lord. I freaking know how to outbound because that obviously, you know, if Facebook goes away, my business changes. Right. Yeah. Um, Yeah, That skill set carries over to a lot of different industries too. I mean, cold call for anything, right. Just drum up business, make contacts, Right. Whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, huge skill set. Uh, that and door knocking, probably the two biggest skills that I can say helped me in speaking, not just selling, but also in being able to have the courage to speak, get on stages, talk to people, things mm-hmm. like that. So don't don't ever for some of you guys are out there that overlook or maybe you put down cold calling or door knocking or any of that stuff. Dude, That is the school of hard knocks when it comes to learning how to be a phenomenal confident communicator. Yeah. So props to anybody that's ever done that. Um, I have a question for Johnny Nitta fan. You said, and you said, you said you born in San Diego, moved to New Mexico, kind of grew up with your roots in New Mexico. And you said verbatim had big dreams from the start. Uh huh. What were some of those dreams? I know you kind of mentioned some of the things that you went through where you started door knocking and you were raising money to go to prep school. You raised money to start a business, a few other things. But like, what were some of those big dreams? Like, what were you dreaming about and where did those dreams come from? Was there an example in your life where you saw possibilities and you're like, oh, yeah, 
you're exposed to something you're like oh wow and, and that triggered that dream or was that something you think that was just inherent with you um I, I i honestly like i think it's just like seeing the possibilities like i remember writing when i was in like third grade or second grade and it's funny because it stayed in my room like i forgot about it but it, i kept it in my room and then all of a sudden senior year i was like dang this is actually happening i wrote two things on a star um and i said um my two goals my two life goals to get to the nba and be an all-star and to get to heaven one day because like faith is huge Mm. in my in my life and so i was like dang this is crazy because i almost started a clothing line with one of my good buddies in the basketball space called jesus stuff and so i was like dang we're literally about it because he wanted to go to the nba too but he was 20 years older than me and so he literally had the opportunities different times literally like got onto the nba court first play towards acl then he got cut right away and like literally like so he's trying to build those dreams up too and so he was 20 years of like older than me but we we're both in the same spot trying to get to that spot and so we're like dude how crazy would it be if we both got there and like we just had a clothing line together and stuff and so that's kind of where it got kicked around a little bit the clothing line but in terms of like I, I really believe like it was just like seeing it and being like there's so many possibilities out there like why can't that be me mm. honestly like seeing like these different people like and hearing their stories i'm like i mean it kind of sounds like me they just had like a some type of mindset to be able to get there but like i didn't i don't think i really knew how to tap into that i wish i I knew what i knew now when i was trying to go pro in the nba because it really is mindset and a lot of the things like i think i had a lot of limiting beliefs at the time i'm 5'10 5'11 whatever I'm like not the highest jumper. I'm not the fastest person. I can shoot very well, but I that's pretty much it. And so, but I had the limiting beliefs of like, I'm short. Nobody's going to pick me up. Who's going to pick up? I mean, a white guy or like an Asian guy. Like, dude, there's not a lot of NBA players. I, that's all I could think about, right? And it wasn't the possibility of like actually being able to get there. And the people who have gotten there is more the negativity. And I let that creep in. And I really believe that stuff. And I think mm. at the end of the day, like it's a mindset's huge key in just insurance, whatever it is, right? If you're selling, if you're whatever it is, it's your mindset that is huge. It's so right. important. And like really like taking, being like aware of, of what you really believe and truly like are thinking about throughout the day and changing those slowly. And I think like, even when I started, I was like, dude, I'm bad at this. All right. And so over time, it's like, okay, take that thought away. I'm good at this. I'm great at this. I like, like what, what at, at eight percent, I feel right. outstanding. Right. I'm not going to quit like different things like that. Right. So it, it really was mindset from the start of like, okay, I can do that. But I like had a lot of limiting beliefs. I think that held me back from that, but it, it yeah. honestly served me so well, even to this day. Well, and it's why, you know, it's, and Tony, you've heard it. I, I don't know how many times you've probably heard House of Dreams now, uh, but that's something that, you know, that we really tap into that, you know, and I, 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 I don't like this about, we'll just say adults in general, that it's like, it's childish to have dreams, right? Like it literally like dreams are some, for, for some reason associated with children. And like, we have this yeah. whole, you know, obviously, you know, it's literally what we founded our entire business on, but it's like helping agents dream again, because I think people have those dreams and then they bury them. Right. Or they do like, and and ours is like the dream is the, like the middle of the house. Right. And then it's the only thing that caps that is your, is your roof, right. Which is your limiting beliefs, like exactly what you're talking about. And I think, you know, people still have those dreams, but then it's like everyday life happens. Right. Or they start going through some trials and tribulation. Right. And those struggles sets in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And I, I just wanted to touch on that because I think it's super important, y'all. Like it's it's cool to it's cool to have dreams, right? And and you don't actually yeah. just because it's a dream doesn't mean you need to be doing like. And that, you said this earlier, Johnny. Insurance and like for me, yeah, it's it's what I love to do. It's my passion, right? But I and I say this a lot too. It's the perfect vehicle. It's the best vehicle, in my opinion, to get you to where your dream is. You know, maybe insurance isn't Johnny's dream, but man, it pays him good to be able to get to yeah. whatever that big dream is, right? That big goal. Exactly. Um, and I know I'm beating a dead horse on that because I say that a lot, but dude, there ain't much that really touches freaking really just me and Tony were just talking about it last night. Financial services, really just insurance. Um, 
I mean, dude, it's got to be one of the best vehicles out there to really get you where you want to go, right? In my yeah, opinion. The, um, the, the vehicle. Yes, it is the, um, yep. You did some pretty crazy stuff, man, for a young guy. Going out there, knocking on doors, raising money to try to get yourself onto a team so that you can go somewhere. You raised money for prep school. I mean, when you say you raised money for prep school, like, what did you do? Did you just go out there and beg? Like, hey, I'm trying to go to prep school. You got $100? Give me $100. Or did no, you, like, I did you I, raffle? Did I, you had did you work to raise that money? Like, what were you doing to get yeah. that 8K for prep school? I mean, it was a lot of different things, but I think it was. Uh, and it's funny. This actually ties in exactly to I feel like how I got onto Ultimate Agent because I did. I actually did the same thing. Now thinking about it, but what I did was I, I literally had like the top 50 names of like people that I I really believe that could help me, and I just wrote them a handwritten letter. Hey, this is what I want to do. This is my goal. This is what I really desire to do. Like, this is my dream passion. I would love for you to support in any way, like even following me on the journey, praying for me, or financially if you can. And right. uh, no harm, no foul, whatever. It's cool. And so I just sent that to a lot of my friends and family. And like, literally, I also worked. Like, I would, um, I would do yard work. I would babysit. I would like literally do anything. Honestly, like it was just like some side jobs. And so like I would just do that. Um, I also did trainings for basketball. And so I trained yep. kids in my neighborhood because I was like 18 at the time. They were like eight or 10. So I'd like, we'd have like a bunch of kids and we'd babysit them and uh, just have them all have like a meal for them. Uh, and then also like do trainings for them for basketball, different things like that. Right. But I, I sent handwritten letters to people like why I want to do this, like my passions, all that stuff. So that was, that was kind of that. Um, but how that ties into ultimate agent is because literally I sent a handwritten letter to Cody as well. And, um, I sent a, yeah, I saw, yeah, I sent, I sent a handwritten letter to him saying like what this opportunity would mean to me, like why, like my, why, like I really yep. want to create a life for, for Bailey and I, um, and like, I always played to this also because I wanted to plan his emotions a little bit, like you're 20 you were 20 when you started i'm 20 as well i played basketball you played basketball like i want to be just like you and all this stuff right and i was like how cool of an opportunity would this be to you, literally like you 10 years ago or 12 years ago to be on this show and like just different things like that and every time he'd call like because you'd call through like different of like Devin or, or uh or uh derek and like he would yep. just call different times right and just be like why should i pick you and uh, I would always try to close them, and I, I really never did. <laughs> I'd always be like, you know you could pick me right now, right? Like, what, like, yeah. you already know Closing you're going to Closing Cody's no easy to... feat, believe me, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it's not, it's not. So he's like, I could, I could for sure tell you possibly you might be in the top, like, 500. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not funny. But um, I think that's really gold. the personability of, like, being able to, connect the emotion with that mm -hmm. and like people want to help you just like personalize it to them and i think like it really comes through to be honest that's so gold bro i mean you guys hear that especially people that are in tony's in medicare like that handwritten note that handwritten letter man guess what Campaign. and i know that's i'm telling you right and sometimes you know people overlook what that means you know that's probably yeah. a big part because who else probably wrote cody a handwritten note and and knew that much about his backstory, right? And and this did. and this and th and it's like, you know, he probably you probably were already picked, right? He was just giving you a tough time, um, yeah. but man, that's that's freaking awesome. And so, literally, so at this point, when you get on the Ultimate Agent, how long you do been in life insurance? Because I know obviously I, started the yeah, group health. But... It was my si it was my sixth week in life insurance. <laughs> Sixth week, okay, going out and freaking and, and you went far in the show, bro. And and don't get me wrong, I was rooting for you too. I was like, come on, hey Johnny, I got money on Johnny, baby. Um Thanks, yeah, brother. we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about where that money went, but you know, I did want to <laughs> highlight, you know, like one of your best days on that show, bro. Like you freaking were writing premium crazy, right? And so I just I wanted you to kind of talk a little bit about that. Okay, hey, I'm freaking you said I'm six freaking weeks in, right? And I'm going in and you're writing, you know, well, like thousands of dollars of premium, yeah. right? Talk about how you were able, like, what, what was it that you really have, what are two to three things, 
Okay. And maybe make them a little bit more tangible. Maybe like really, Hey, this, like, these were the steps I took to be able to issue this premium while on the show. Like yeah. that's the, that's the most impressive part. I think a lot of people like they got to see the finished product. Like y'all, there's no way it was like, like super comfortable and easy to sell insurance and you're recorded the whole time. You've got coaches, right. Who like, cause then now you feel as though like, man, I want to like try and impress these guys. Right. But then yeah. also utilize them. And so talk like, what are two to three things you did while you're out there that you think really helped you kind of excel and, and write premium and make it as far as you did in the show? Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, just to that point real quick, like one of the things that was honestly for me, it was, it was tough is because it was guys are the guys that I've like looked up to. Like when I was listening to stuff, I would listen to like, even with you guys, like I would listen to interviews with you guys on Cody's thing. I'd listen to Roger's podcast. I listened to Nate Offert. I've literally listened to every like one of his podcasts. So I knew about all these different people, Brian and all these people. Right. And I'm like, dude, it's like, it is nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, like, you're just like, these guys are the people. And you're I six weeks in. Right <laughs> yeah. You're right. Just like, you got a camera shoved in your face. <laughs> Make calls. <laughs> yeah. It's like you, like, they're literally watching you and like, while you're calling and then you got camera crew right there too. And so it's like, there is that external pressure of like, I want them to like me. Mm -hmm. I want the, our relationship to go further, but also it's like, no, like th these different things now. And I think um, that, that was intimidating. Like it was just like David Price being in the same room, like David Price, Brian, Leslie. Um, and then you got the next set of mentors, like Roger Dallas and Nate, like they're just, they're animals. They, they mm -hmm. all are. They're really good at what they do. And it's like, I've looked up to these guys and all of a sudden now it's like, they're trying to like help me win or like whatever. Right. And so it's, it is intimidating, but, um, yeah, no, but it was cool. I think that that one takeaway from the show is like, what I'm super grateful for is that it literally like a lot of people have to like fight to get into the network of people. And I mm. think like, honestly, I just feel so grateful and privileged, like that it was given in a way, like it was like me right. not being on that show. I wouldn't be a part of impact. I wouldn't be a part of like, different things like that. And I'm not saying like, I did have to fight for it there. I think that a lot of people would get this opportunity and not jump at every bit. Right. There were five people that were selected and everybody had the invitation to go to SWAT. Two people went, how many mm. people actually like built the network and was able to build relationships there to then translate that to 8%, all these different things. So there are opportunities, but I think like I was the ultimate agent gave me, access to you guys that I like you guys would have never known who I was yet until that show came out. Right. So super like indebted to Cody. Like I'm super, super grateful. I literally was hanging out with him last night cause he's here in Arizona. And like, I was like, bro, like, thank you so much. But um, the two to three things I think that are very tangible is I, I said it a ton on the show and I literally made a video about it d yesterday but like when you're in that pressure situation, when you have 650 leads, they didn't show it on the, on the thing, but they literally gave us like a stack. Yeah. Like it was huge. And um, what you have to realize is like, dude, it's a, it really is a numbers game, but you have Bingo. to get an answer to the, the, you have to get an answer. Like you have to get a yes or no, a maybe doesn't count. And a lot of agents I think struggle with, getting a maybe or I need to think about it. And so they can't play the numbers game actually because mm -hmm. a numbers game is based on a yes or no. If you're getting a maybe that doesn't count, right. I'm not interested that counts as a no, right? Uh, as long as you're able to dig through the smoke screen a little bit. But I think what I realized is like, if I get resolution to the lead, I'm going to win. So that's what I did. I literally was like, if they cuss me out, if they do whatever, click next one, next one, next one, next one, next one. And, and then love the one you're with, the one that's interested at that time. You just boom, 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 boom. So it's like there were different opportunities that came up. Like I was in a house that, that one day that it was like 6,200 or something like that. That day I went to this house, wrote the, the, um, the life partner. It was, it was, they were like together for like 30 years but not married yet. And mm -hmm. so, um, so I wrote him and then I turned to the wife and I was like, hey, can I review your policy as well? And um, she's like, yeah, I'm paying this. I'm like, I, I could save you like 10 bucks a month. It's not a lot, but it's better. So like, let's just see if you can get approved. Boom, go to that. So dude, dude took two apps in that house and then go to the next one. And um, I, I mean, I got no showed like 
on that day that I wrote six grand, I got no showed probably five or six times, but it's like having the, the calendar stacked with appointments, triple quadruple, like booking, yep. because if they are not there, you cannot waste time. So I think that's the first thing, like literally every single minute of my calendar was booked. Yep. Like if I'm not running the appointment, I'm dialing for more appointments or like I'm door knocking. Right. I mean, you saw how that worked out. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> doing that again. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that, that's like the first tangible thing. Like literally get resolution to the numbers because there's 650 leads we were given. Like we should have honestly, looking back, we should have wrote a ton more, um, mm. but it's all good. So I think that's the first thing. Like it's really a numbers game. And um, a lot of people are busy throughout the day, but not productive. And um, that's that's another thing, like being productive. I talked a little bit about it on the last point, but it's like, literally like every point you've got to be talking to people over and over and over again like whatever it looks like right if you're doing tell like now i just switched to telesales i don't even do virtual i just do telesales yep. and so um it's allowed me to scale a lot faster because i'm able to talk to a lot more people but it's still like my stomach drops still like i took like this weekend bailey and i went and just had like a one day getaway or a two day getaway but it's like my stomach still on monday coming in it like dropped a little bit. Like, I honestly, I do not want to pick up the phone and start dialing, but I think like being productive throughout the day is very, very, very important and not just being busy. Right. Cause I've fallen accustomed to that. Like, Oh, I'm talking to these like strategic partners or whatever. Right. And it's like, dude, you're not working. And right. like, I, that's honestly what I've done. And I've seen that. And it's like, I just, you're not, if, if it's not really like generating revenue, like it's, it's not really being productive. Right. And it's like, you can say that, right. It's easy to justify that. Like, Oh, like we're building a relationship and all this stuff. And it's like, dude, that, that conversation that took an hour could have taken 15 minutes and been a lot more productive and you could have gone on to the next one. So right. I think those could are have been scheduled that, at like, a better time too. Right. <laughs> right. Like could have been scheduled at a better time. hundred so. percent. Yeah. So those are like a couple take like practical things that I actually implemented, like triple dialing every lead. Um, if they didn't answer, like literally I just put it to the bottom and then what, uh, Nate talked out. about is like, take a sack of 25 triple dial, tri like triple dial them again. And one more time, those are on the direct mail leads, the age leads. Cause they give us a fresh direct mail drop. And then they also gave us, um, some age leads, the age ones, if they didn't answer off after a triple dial, I'll just move on yep. and just like count it as a no, because it's like, dude, you can't waste time. Yeah. You got too many that. leads. <laughs> Like that's right. a good yep. problem to have. That's, you know, that's ultimately what you want when you have that many leads. It's just call and move on, call and move on, call and move on. Right. Yes. Don't, I'm not going to sit there and argue with you over why you should buy my product. If you're not that interested and you, I'm not getting that vibe. I'm just moving to the next person. Right. Yeah. And, and that's a yeah. nice space to be in. Not every agent has that Liberty. Like if, even <laughs> my wife doesn't quite have that Liberty, right? She's got a lot of great leads, but she has to work them. Like she has to stay on that person and really, you know, and have those deeper conversations of like, why aren't you interested, you know, and what can we do to turn this around a little different? So yeah, um, it's a nice totally. place to be. I When I door knocked, that's how I treated it. Cause when I was door knocking, I would cut out 120 homes in a thick residential neighborhood. And I would just do rounds until basically I talked to every person there. You know, that would at least answer the door. I mean, there's certain a percentage of them that just look through the window and they're like, no, not interested. <laughs> so you just mark them off and move on. But that they was it. They like, didn't yeah. just wave. They did some other right. things. <laughs> yeah. Wave with one finger. Like, get out of yeah. here. Um, so, yeah, there was a certain percentage of those people. Right. But I mean, I would talk to 95 to 100 people out of every 120 of those homes. And it was the same thing. It was just like either you're interested or not, because there's a neighbor right next door that's going to be interested. And just yep, over yeah. and over and over. So, and I wanted, I wanted to, so Johnny, and we've got, we still have um, a few minutes here. And so, you know, again, kudos to you on freaking ultimate agent, man. Like even me, like I'm coming in on year nine and I still would have been freaking like, I would have been sweating too, man. Like, I mean, that's, that's yeah. a lot of pressure. So kudos to you. I mean, six freaking weeks in y'all. I hope you guys heard that. That's so freaking crazy impressive. So, but I want to, cause now we're what, how many, how long ago technically was that? How long have you technically been in life insurance now? How many? Yeah, months? so I've been in uh, so April, May, June, July, August, okay. so four and a half. Okay, okay. Now. So now, what I want to and dude, you've had like exponential growth. 
Right. And I love that you said you talked about the network and that y'all, if you get in that room and I think me and Tony, I mean, it's literally why me and Tony are doing this show together is because we really took, we took advantage of, of what was a good relationship because we had the, um, the opportunity and we were afforded the opportunity, I should say, to go get in the same room as some other, again, high network in that freaking blew up Redwood and you guys know my story. Um, But, you know, your network is your net worth. But what I wanted to talk about now is, okay, new agent coming in right now. You've you've again had exponential growth, right? You seem like you've been doing it for years, right? I'm not playing. I'm being 100 percent honest. What are some things go back to day one? Hey, like, okay, now I know what I know. We've got new agents watching this, right? I, I've got new people that are starting in life that we're trying to ramp up there too. I need yeah. another two, another two to three things. Okay, knowing what I do now, right? And I know obviously what you learned on Ultimate Agent, but like how you're running your business, like you talked on telesales and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you had to start over your life insurance business, like basically go back to day one and start it over, right? What would you do differently, um, if anything, right? Or what was like, hey, yeah. what is the ideal business model that you're really tapping into now? Well, honestly, like it is telesales and one call closes. Um, That's what I've realized is like the follow up game is so challenging, especially in telesales. And so kind of the system that we have is like um, it's it's a perfect it's designed for a telesales sale, if that makes sense. So it's like because it's a direct mail, we send out a form um, and then they call in to our system. And then pretty much from there, it's uh, they go through like who's like because I do mortgage protection. That's all I do. Um, yeah. I've dabbled in like final expense. We did that on the show is my first time doing final expense. So like that's why I asked Leslie, like, what's the script that I use? Because I know my mortgage protection script and it's not the same. It's very similar, but it's like not it's not at all that like it's not the same. Right. So it's like I had to train my mind literally in the second of like, oh, OK, like I'm financial, like finance, like. I, I'm final expense, final expense, like not like trying to protect the home. Right. Um, Cause some people, a lot of them lived in apartments and so they don't, they don't own homes. Right. Yeah. So um, what I realized is, so the, a few things, right. So the first one, my first week, the, like I set 17 appointments off 1500 dials. Two showed up. <laughs> right. so it's like you go in newer newer agents like oh the first thing set an appointment that's a win 17 appointments baby Dude, let's, let's go, go. And yeah like, I'm just hyped, right and all of a sudden boom no show after no show after no show so it's like oh i'm like i thought i was thinking i'm pretty good at this right and then all of a sudden boom smack on my face that made no money and it's like oh shoot and then all of a sudden like i get them to show and it's like uh yeah i wasn't really interested like uh yeah like can you just take me off the list or like i don't know like just different things and so like I, I couldn't overcome that but i had to have a mentor that continuously gave me the next step not just the this with this 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 all these things like all right do this and then talk to me next like yeah. the next step yep. and i think like he's like all right so we really need to focus on like the why why are they filling out this form why are they calling in get down to ask the questions that most people aren't going to want to ask the uncomfortable questions, the Mm -hmm. things that might turn them off a little bit, but it's like that also is going to ultimately make them want to buy a lot quicker. And like in that moment. So I think being able to dig into the why of like, what made you even this former like call in and, and, and just leave your information. Like what was the main reason? And like, yet like, two days ago he's like because my wife's a single mom and she could not stay in here if we didn't have any coverage and i'm like do you have any coverage and she's like he's like no and so then he's by he's selling me why i should give him a whole payoff instead of a half right like right. It, it's it's like that's when it really changes the game when you get them to really sell you on why they should get more coverage right so i think it's really digging asking the questions that a lot of people are scared to ask answer be or ask because honestly I was scared to ask those questions yeah. because it, it's uncomfortable a little bit, honestly, but there's I think so like much, being able there's to so like... much power in questions, bro. And that's in, mm-hmm. you know, here's, you guys hear this though, right? He asked the question and then let them talk right to where they sell, they sell themselves. If you guys just shut up and I know there's hey no, I can't say I'm always perfect either. Cause I'm a freaking blabbermouth. Tony knows very well. Um, Yo, Blurt. But, 
Hey, hey, it, that's a gay. Add that one to the Google Doc. Uh, that one's next week's. But no, already like, used it. When it when it when it comes to sales, though, like and and I'm not tooting my own horn though, but that's man, you get me on the phones. It's like ask those ask the powerful questions. Really, yeah. the, like why why are you even calling me? Like why are we talking? Right. And really, and that don't use that tone of voice, right? Maybe shift it up a little bit, but tap into that why, and then just let them talk. Like let them answer, let them sell themselves. I think that's that's so powerful. And, and real quick, I know we're we're pushing our time here, but I had a I had one last question for you here, Johnny. Um, and this is let's I, I know you probably know this, but I wanted to to kind of end with this. Five years from now, where is Johnny? Where's yeah. Johnny? Five years from now, man. Like, what is like? I'm, I'm like, I know you probably have a vision board and everything like that, but like, yeah. Where, where do you really foresee yourself? You know, I, I, I want to say you're building a team now, even though you're still yeah. kind of getting into it. You're building. Where yeah. five years from now, man? Where are you gonna be? Well, five years from now, having a conference for young entrepreneurs. That's my goal, and so like, my, but, but the insurance industry is able to get me to that, and I think it's such a niched market. And like being able to like have different connections in this space, I think it's what I've realized is it's such a gift to be able to like have like just know a lot of people in the space now that it's like, boom, like I could just get in front of different people's like audiences and I could start getting a, a following just from insurance and start an insurance right now. And then it's such a great way to be able to add other things as well, because insurance is definitely like a niche market. And if you're crushing it in the space, people come and start like flying at you. Right. And so right. I think being able to grab them like through that. So I brought on a full-time social media guy that does all my like editing, yep. all that stuff. And, and yeah, I'm really impressed by him. Honestly, he's really cool. Um, What's but... his contact info and everything? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of doing all my own shit. Drop man. it on the banner real <laughs> yeah, quick. Right. Let's go. Yeah. It's funny because he, he's uh, a lot of people have asked that, and I'm like, dude, I don't want to give your info out. He's like, all right, that's fine. Like, I was like, I'll just keep you more busy. I'll pay you more. Like, if yeah, you can do right. more content for me. Um, but I think five years from now, being able to like my my, I want to be like my goal is to be a millionaire in 18 months. Okay. And so I'm really pushing hard for that. And so it's like, okay, cool. I want to do that and, and just build the machine. So that's why like buying the power players was not easy, but it's worth it because I know that'll get me there quicker. And I know that building that skill and having that like experience and network of people, they're not, mm -hmm. I'm not going to pull them down. I'm going right. to get pulled up. Like there's right, too right. many, too like successful people in there. Uh, they're not going to soup down to my level. I'm going to have to force be forced to go up to theirs. And I think That's like good. being able to constantly push yourself out of your comfort zone, like honestly, like my goal is to spend a hundred K next year, just on self-development and things like that to be able to push it forward. Cause I know each time I spend money, it's like income just comes flying back like so mm -hmm. fast, but it, it hurts a little bit to put it up front. Right. So right. Um, honestly, just be able to build, like my podcast build like different things build branding so that like wherever i go because i'm with impact now but it's like dude what if i'm not there forever what if something happens i don't want people to be so sold on a company i want yes. them to know who i am because if yeah. i go and start an, oh, my own imo say for example like i don't think i would but say maybe that happens yeah. right. um I don't want them to be like, oh, I'm staying because I, I came to you because of impact. I came to you because you're Johnny and I, I really like what you're doing, right? So yes. building a brand, being able to honestly like do what Cody's doing, but more of a, on an entrepreneurial scale. So right. um, that's so honestly that, like my goal. Yeah. With that, so where, so where, where can they find you? Um, yeah. Where, where, so, and I know shout out, shout out the podcast and everything. Um, if you guys haven't already, uh, Johnny runs an amazing um, show and it's not, just for insurance it is for young entrepreneurs if i'm correct yes. yes um so let us let them know where they can reach out to you um the podcast all that good stuff yeah so uh it's called from unknown to unforgettable joe's actually been a guest on there and um and that that's why we called it this because it's such everybody can relate to that person that's just down out like nobody knows who you are terrible like obstacles homeless whatever it is right you're unknown but to get to unforgettable, like the little things matter, right? And so everybody wants to get to that unforgettable spot. And so I'm trying to be able to have a podcast that highlights people who are doing great stuff in the entrepreneurial space that can give, like me, like I'm not even close to where I want to be, but it's like, I want people to know that like you can start 
small because it literally like I'm going to tell this on stage one day. I'm in a 500 square foot apartment right now. I'm literally moving into a new apartment, two bedrooms this week. And it's like literally like it starts so small. Right. And the biggest obstacles create the best stories. So if you want to follow me, you you know you're going to anyways. You're going to see me on, on like everywhere. Um, but just shoot me a follow, comment. Um, might but as well from do unknown it now. You're going to follow me eventually. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, it's like, right? you might just, as well do just, it now. <laughs> yeah. Because don't be you, late. You don't be late to the party. <laughs> exactly. You could brag to your friends you followed me when I was younger. But um, yeah, so Johnny Nitafan, J-O-H-N-N-Y, Nitafan, N-I-T-A-F-A-N. Uh, one on Instagram, uh, just look up Johnny Nittafan on Facebook. And then, um, I'm on LinkedIn, YouTube, um, Spotify, even our podcast is on as well as, um, TikTok. So posting yep. a Hell ton yeah. of content. So yeah, follow me. Definitely. Uh, I'd love to follow, like have you follow me on the journey. So, love and you if you were, yeah. if you were not a fan, if you were not a fan of Nittafan, I am not a fan of you. Um, Ooh. I know, I know we've kind of gone long, but I, if you don't mind, I want to press this a little bit further and, and, and chew up a few more yeah. minutes here because there's a couple of things that we've that we haven't asked that we've kind of overlooked. And I know the audience wants to know. So I want to I want to go back to New Mexico for a minute. I want to go okay. back to those he's, big dreams. He's and Tony's uh, stuck on this New Mexico, I man. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back to those big dreams and some of the things that you were doing. You're knocking on doors. You're raising your own money. You're following. You're pursuing your own dreams. Right. You're you have this vision in your brain. What is your family life back then? Like, what are they saying when they see you writing letters, uh, asking for money? What are they saying when you're knocking on doors, fundraising? Like, what are they doing in the background while you're doing some yeah. of these different things that other kids don't do? Well, they shot like my dad. I, I really appreciate him a ton because when I went home and like told him I, I was going to quit basketball, like they they're so supportive from the start. And um they were always really, really, really supportive of me. And so they're like, what you want to do, we're going to back you 100%. But like, we, we, you just need, you need to show us that you're bought in and sold out too. Mm. And so they just had basic things like literally, I almost got grounded from going to the gym uh, when I was in high school because I had a C in my class. And he's like, I know you could do better. Like, I know it. So like, why aren't you? Like, you just mm. pick up your grades because I know you can. And, uh, but they, but they're, I really appreciate them because they, they were all, my dad was always like, it's okay to like, not go to college. It's okay to not do these things, but at least have a plan. Right. And so I think it's really cool. Cause I went and told him like, Hey, I'm quitting basketball. Like they, he was just like, so supportive. Like, okay, you got to work then, or you got to go to school like one or the other, but have a plan. And right. he's like, if like, I'm not just going to pay for you just to be out there and do nothing. Right. Cause I was like, I want to stay in Phoenix. It's good to leave the nest, but it's like trying to figure that out. And so I was like, all right, I'll start working at Starbucks and get the benefit of like going to school for free. They give it for free online. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was like, all right, I'll do that. And like, I literally failed two semesters straight and then I quit or not. I didn't quit. I just pivoted to insurance. So it's, there not, we a, go. it's not a on. loss. It's, <laughs> it's not a loss. He's right? learning. So, uh, hey, me me quitting college was by far the best freaking decision Joe Camper ever right. made. I'll give you, hey, I'll tell you that freaking yes. right now. I'll be a, I'll be labeled a dropout for the rest of my freaking life because I'll tell you, it don't feel like I'm a dropout. That's for sure. Yeah, one hundred percent. But they were very supportive of me. They would like I would tell them these different things. They would give me ideas on how to expand on it more. So they were really supportive. But it wasn't like. It was, it really wasn't like anybody else. Like, it's like my friends, like they're just, they would live in the gated communities. They lived in these nicer places that they could go and diff do different things. And it's like, no, you like, you have to work for it because we're also working for it. We're right. using a lot of our money, a lot of our paid time off so that we can take you to tournaments. Like you have to put in some effort too. And so it's like, all right. So it makes you just think creatively when you really want to do something. Like, how can I get there? How can I do it? Because making it to Vegas like three times in, in like six months is not easy for like the normal, just a normal person, right? Like traveling a ton. And so it's like, how do I get this? How do I get people to pay? Like try to like network into like getting on a sponsored team mm -hmm. um, or like doing different things. But I think 
the networking thing came from early stage because I was able to get training from the best trainers at a young age in basketball because I like, I knew this person that knew the trainer or I knew this person that knew this person that knew the trainer. So I'd become friends with them and be like, Oh, like, they're like, come on. Like, I bet you could come. And then they're, they're like, yeah, cool. So then I'm in the training with them. And then this person knows this person. And yeah. all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, like there's a network of people that you have built all when you're a teen. And then I'm like, dude, I could do this with insurance. This person knows this like you, like I literally hired, three virtual assistants because of Joe, because I knew him. And so it's like different things, like thinking outside the box, networking, creating, like being creative. So they were really supportive to answer your question. Yeah. Awesome. That's good. When did you and meet think, Bailey? Yeah. I met Bailey um, college. So funny story. We didn't really like each other at the start, um, but I was best for, I was really, really, really good friends with her brother. And her and my her her brother and I were actually roommates in college for two years. Okay. Um, until I married her, and so pretty much what happened was, um, I, um, when I quit basketball, I made the decision. I called my dad, "Hey, I'm quitting basketball," and all of a sudden, Bailey and I end up at the same dinner place with her brother because I'm good friends with him and all this stuff, and so like they're sitting over there like there's like eight of us and like bailey's sitting right next to me and like i didn't like her honestly but i was like <laughs> i was like something i feel like i can trust her and so right after i quit called the coach and told them i'm not going i was like hey could i like tell you like the biggest secret i have and she's like yeah and i was like i just quit basketball and she's like what because everybody knew me as like the basketball player that was my identity and right. who i was and she's like what and I was like, don't tell anyone, though, because, like, I just – so I told her that, but, like, honestly, we didn't really like each other because I felt like she was intruding in our guy time, but, like, it was more <laughs> me intruding in them because they're really close. And so um, that that's how we met. And so then we, like, literally would share on campus, cold sharing, like, talk to people, cold approach, and uh, just share, like, our faith and, and the Bible and all that with them and invite them mm -hmm. to different things. And so – we built a relate friendship just on that. Like we'd go sharing at uh, the, the college and um, we would talk in between and share together, do, like do be a part of groups. So that's how we really built our relationship uh, and our friendship is through that stuff. And so that, that's how we met. That's awesome, know, man. Hey, Bailey, Bailey, a, hold on. If yeah. Bailey, if Bailey's watching this, Saturdays are for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Okay. Let me tell you this. I told my friend, anybody gave me a Gary V book, like, I know they're the one. A few weeks after I met her, I was talking about how I love Gary V, and she gave me two books Ooh. from Gary V. Yeah. And I was like, no way. But I didn't really like her at the time, but I was like, dude, what the heck? Yeah, there like, it is. That's crazy. That's nuts. And all of a sudden, I told my friends, and they're like, she's cool. But like, there's no way that you're in her league. Like, no way. And I was like, I mean, I'll, I'll give it a shot. If I had to get told no, then okay. But I'll give it a shot. So, shot my What's, shot and um, it worked. <laughs> it obviously did. What's – uh, just kind of digging into that just a tad more before we shut this thing down because this is getting pretty juicy here. But uh, what's what's her role been like in these last, say, two That's years? That's a good – Right, as you yeah. kind of made some changes and made some pivots – Right. You're not yeah. quitting on certain things, but you're making some pivots and you're seeking these new things. You have all this stuff going on, flying out the ultimate agent, all this. I mean, you're on a bit of a roller coaster, bro. And it's beautiful to watch. Yeah, um, yeah. You are living a life of one of the favorite one of my favorite uh, uh, platitudes from Sun Tzu, which is opportunities multiply as opportunities yeah. are seized. Right. And we, you alluded to that yeah. earlier. But what's her role been as a, as a support system for you? Yeah. Um, that's a great question. And, um, honestly, like she's been ride or die, like honestly, from the start, like she's just been like, where, like, I trust you. And I trust that, like, cause when I made the decision to even go into life insurance, like from the employee benefits and kind of leaving her dad's partnership in a way and going our own route, I was like, yep. I don't want to be stuck in one spot. Like I want to be able to do this all over the country, wherever and whenever. And with that, you're more tied down because in person, right? And so I was like, I don't really want to do this. And I know you want to travel 
And so it's a lot. Like I, it was honestly scary because I presented it to her at first, and I was like, I can make like so much money so fast. And uh, she's like, it sounds kind of weird. But then, and and then I waited a few months, and I was like, hey, I actually want to do this. And I like, here's the plan. Like here's where I want to go. Like what do you think? And I think she's just been such a huge support system no matter what. Like that's why I got so emotional on like the 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 show because like. Yep she was literally like sending me encouraging messages. Like you need to break these limiting beliefs, different things like been at conferences. Like that's not her favorite thing to do, but she does it because she wants to support and like be there and like encourage me. And like, she's like, okay, like literally you're going to take all of our money and put it into this business. Like that's, you got to put some guts on the line for that. Like Mm -hmm. not everybody will, and I understand, like, not everybody does have as, uh, like, an amazing, like, spouse and support system as that. And I, I feel, like, super grateful and privileged. And I think, like, honestly, I always wanted somebody from the start that I had nothing with so that I can literally, like, if, if they were able to buy into, like, being loyal, even when we're in a 500-square-foot apartment, like, I know that they'll be loyal at the top when we do have a lot of money. And so, like, that's what, like, My goal, my dream was to get married young, honestly, because I was like, if I'm in the NBA, people are going to be flying at me. I want people to know me when I was in high school. And like, I want people to know me when I had nothing so I can give them everything because that's the ultimate test of loyalty, like that they don't change when the money changes. Right. Right. And so I think like they, she's just been like, so, so her role has just been like, really like encouraging me in the hard times and not saying like. I, she's expressed her fears but like i know that there's like probably other things that like maybe she like hasn't shared like oh like that's a huge risk like all those things like when i'm like on the optimistic train and like this is like where we want to go this is what we want to do like she's all for it she's like do it go for it go after your dreams i want you to accomplish it i want you to succeed that's and good. not like holding me down like the the limiting beliefs like not pulling me down but like pushing me up Yep. letting me like okay like that sounds crazy but like i'm for it like i really wanted to join awesome. power players and all of a sudden she's like do it just do it like yep. do it if you're saying yes just to something it. you're saying no to other things so do you want to say yes to this or notice like and notice something else or do you want to say no or yes to other things right. and if this is what yeah. you want to say yes to i know it'll do. propel you to where we want to go and so having somebody that's like i don't know like dude i it's hard to explain because she's just been so encouraging, like loving, like caring when I'm on my worst day, she's like, it's going to get better. It's okay. Like we'll keep going. Cause she sees the vision sometimes when I don't even see it myself. All right. Cool. It's good, man. This has been good, a phenomenal man. hour. Thank yep. you for joining us. Appreciate it's you, been brother. a super pleasure. I do. I would like you to one last thing. Like if you could say something to young couples, right? Mm-hmm. Young couples in their twenties, 21, 22, right? And they're 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 at that moment in their life where they are living in a small apartment or they're right and they kind of have their dreams and are not maybe sure. Like if you had a tiny little piece of advice that you could give yeah. to a young couple in their early 20s, what what would you say to them? Uh, find what you guys really want to do in life. Like find what drives you, find what you you guys are both passionate about and find it together. Like you guys you have to have a dream together and it can't be just one-sided because if it's one-sided, it's just going to be a really tough dynamic and situation. And I think like being able to find something like she's not like she's been in the, she's done office work for insurance. She's done worked with uh, our, like her dad for years in the health insurance space. So she knows how to do that stuff. So she utilized those skills. Like I know how to call carries. I know how to do that. So she quit her job and just started calling the carriers to help them get issued. Now she's finishing school this semester so I had to bring someone else on, but it's like, find a, like find something that you guys both want to do and be able to find a way to incorporate both of them. So for us, her passion isn't the business world. Her passion isn't um, to be on stage speaking and all that, but her passion is traveling. So how can we do that together? So, okay, cool. I want to do insurance, but I can't stay here forever. Like I, I want to do telesales so that we can get licensed in more states. Yep. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Go to where exactly. you want. Well, it, it, well, it's like now I'm like working all East Coast when I'm here, so it's a three-hour difference, and sure. so that's why I'm able to like protect some time at home. So it's like I'm done at yep. six, which is nine Eastern, 
and then I'm, I'm able to hang out for the rest of the night with her. And so awesome. being able to one, like find just find something that you guys both want to do and really incorporate it together. So for us, like I said, it was insurance, the money vehicle to be able to fuel the dream that we really have together. And it's traveling and sp- like my goal is to speak all across the country, like kind of like a coach Burt, Cody Askins together. Um, but like, like on a higher scale, I know that sounds crazy, but like, it's, right, like that's on. what I want to do. And so let's go. Um, so that's what I want to do. So like, she's able to travel and I want to speak in really nice spots. So that's, uh, that's some of the advice is just build a vision together. And like, that's really, it, I'm not the one making the money. Like, yeah, I am, but it's our money. Like, this is our sure. dream. We're, we're doing it together. And because she's done so much that are like, she not money making things but like have literally pushed me and propelled me to who I've become today. So it's like, it's our, we're doing this together. It's good. So yeah. Well said brother, man. Thank you all again. Thank you again for coming out. You know, this has been a a jam packed hour full of uh, great nuggets, great conversations, some gems, some thoughts, a little bit of emotion. I've loved it. And like I said earlier, man, if you're not a fan of Nita fan, I'm not a fan of you. So (laughs) everybody out there listening, thank you all for tuning in with us. It's been a phenomenal Wednesday. We'll see you next week. It's live as Wednesday, 9 a.m. Central. So it's it's Wednesday, right? Guys, the week ain't over. Let's get it. Let's get it. We'll see y'all for Friday Fuel, right? Friday Fuel this Friday. We'll see y'all. Have a good one. Adios.